But then eventually you guys moved off of Ubuntu, and that was around the... Was that after the Unity... When when was that related to Unity? Because I know that's part of the, the story. Oh, yeah. Well, it, it is. Um, it happened to be that... So the week that Canonical announced they would no longer develop Unity, mm -hmm. they had... Uh, their sales team was in our office downtown. And so I was sitting across the couch from the canonical sales team uh, when they announced that Unity wasn't wasn't going to continue any longer. And um, uh, and it was just it was a it was a shock to us. I was really excited about Unity 8 and the prospects there and the you know the, I think there's kind of this Cassandra effect that would happen with Canonical and Ubuntu sometimes and to my mind at least where uh, they had this uh, you know they had the right um, they had a lot of the right ideas um uh, and but they were just always like too early to realize them and uh, even uh, a lot of the things i uh, i think about we're doing today with gestures on phones mm. uh, they were way ahead on that with with the unity 8. um i think the work that they did in ux was really impressive drove linux ahead considerably um but ultimately i can also understand um it wasn't where you know the you know, their revenue was, wasn't where the real business was, wasn't where they were serving, uh, you know, customers. And so, um, so it also, you know, after the shock made sense. And, um, but it also meant an opportunity for us because the desktop is everything to us. Mm -hmm. uh, it's what, uh, it's what we think about every day. Like, and um, it's, it matters for our business and for our customers and us personally. And so that, um, well, it was sad to see that go. It also seemed like an opportunity for us to kind of express the things that we wanted to do in Linux desktop that um, that we couldn't really get done through Ubuntu either. Uh, your camera just died. Oh, there it is. Okay. Oh, what happened there? Um, <laughs> that, was, that was weird. Um, so, Unity you know, was a weird situation for Ubuntu because I know when they swapped, a lot of people didn't like it. Then when they swapped off of it, a lot of people didn't like they swapped off of it. They got used to it. So what was, like, when they did swap to Unity, what was that like going from, you know, this GNOME thing that was established at that point to this whole new thing they had just developed? Like, were you guys worried what the experience would be like? How did, how did that really go? Oh, I think we had... Um... Whether right or wrong, we had a lot of faith in the Ubuntu team, mm -hmm. and um, we we thought they were being careful with what they were developing, and and um, maybe perhaps it came a little out early. Mm -hmm. uh, I know. I mean, I remember Mark uh, Mark Shuttleworth um, uh, um, like going through bug reports from people, and you know, reading what the responses were and taking that all, all in. I think there was a lot of care um, and. Um, uh, you know, effort to listen to what, you know, the feedback that happened with, with what was a pretty dramatic change for people. Mm -hmm. And um, change change for users can be hard. Um, we, we went through it um, when we developed the Cosmic UX and we wanted to deliver that to our customers um, because we, um, you know, we, had, we had faith in the testing and the user testing, the UX work and the things that we had done. And um, I, we broke things for people that they were used to. But over time, I, the, the overwhelming response was positive. And I think it was the same for Unity, that over time, um, the response was more positive by far than it was negative. Mm -hmm. And the negative things are, in some ways, UX changes. Um, in other ways, perhaps not having the right feature sets available um, early on. Uh, but in the end, like you said, uh, switching away from Unity was just as just disruptive for a lot of folks as, mm -hmm. as uh, moving to in the first place. Yeah, I can't speak specifically for Canonical, but the way it looks to me from the outside is they really overstretched. Like, they wanted to get into TVs, they wanted to get into phones, they wanted to get into all of these things. Like, they, they had, like, a phone, um, a Kickstarter, an Indiegogo. Like, it, it seemed like they were just trying to, like, do too much at once, and then they had to pull back to what they knew worked, and... That ended up also meaning we had to move away from what Unity was and then move back to GNOME. And I, I, I'm i sure at that point, if you were a Unity user or if you're in that position, just the whole situation just 
it was confusing and it was unclear like what was really going to happen. Like, is Gnome going to be in a good state now? Is it going to be like it was before? Like, what's really, really going on here? Yeah, I think um, I think that's a great point. There's, I, I think the maybe the the prime motivation was right to make mm. a, UI, uh, re, a responsive UX mm. in a desktop experience. That was absolutely right. To us, it's in, in completely critical that we do that because ours is because of tiling. So all of our apps need to be responsive, but that also means that our platform will work on um, lots of different form factors. Mm -hmm. But um, but the difference between maybe our approach today and the approach that Canonical had taken was that um, Canonical's target was the mobile phone first. Yeah. And that wasn't where the users were to start off the platform. And we're going totally to where, to the desktop, which is where all our users are. Mm -hmm. And then we'll see where it goes from there rather mm -hmm. than the other way around. We're, so in other words, we're not depending on mobile to be successful for the project to be successful. Right just need to build a better experience for our customers today. Mm -hmm. So what year did Pop OS start? 2017. Okay. So I guess just what was that discussion like saying that you, like you guys wanted to run your own distro? Obviously, it was based on Ubuntu. So you weren't doing your entirely own thing. It's not like you were running, you know, full-on package repos for everything, but it's still a massive burden to take on maintaining a distro. And because now, before, like, you could send people who had software issues to Canonical, and obviously I'm sure you guys were still helping people with things before that, but now it's not Canonical's responsibility for anything to be working. Now, to the user, it doesn't matter that under the hood it's still very much got a lot of those core Ubuntu features, now it's your thing. So what was that like? It's, it doesn't actually quite work that way. Okay. When you ship a laptop to someone, you own that experience. That's fair, that's fair. But yeah, it doesn't matter if it's Ubuntu and our customer would never, wouldn't even expect to go to Canonical for help. Okay. Um, they call okay. us for help, whether it's software or, and, the, and um, a lot of the experience is really how well um, the operating system um, is uh, adapted to work with the hardware. Mm -hmm. So by that time, we were all rolled, already rolling our own kernels, a lot of times mess, a lot of uh, large parts of the stack, um, because we wanted to be a zero-day hardware manufacturer for Linux, mm -hmm. meaning that when Intel has brand new chips, when NVIDIA does, when um, uh, AMD or whomever, mm -hmm. um, that you can get that brand new you know, Meteor Lake, which is, you know, around the corner, Meteor Lake laptop with Linux on it. Um, and you don't have to wait six months for Linux to catch up. Mm -hmm. you know, a lot of that happens upstream with mm -hmm. Intel and AMD. But um, getting it packaged and getting a good experience in the distro, that was all, that was our responsibility. Mm -hmm. So um, so we had, um, we were already doing a lot of it. The, um, what what was added on, especially for the first release, is uh, is our thinking of, okay, well, now let's take this operating system and let's make it match the aesthetic of uh, System76. So uh, when you get a, when you come to our, when you maybe customer experience starts with an ad that has, you know, color, the coloring, the brand feel of System76. And then that takes you to the website that has the same feel. And then you get the product that has, uh, you know, the same character and characteristics. And then you start it and now it looks uh, similar. I think that is a really high quality experience that we wanted to start to deliver. Mm -hmm. and. Um, the first release was about doing that. Let's set our aesthetic. Mm -hmm. And then from there, we started chopping off the pieces that we knew our customers needed um, or were requesting. Mm -hmm. like full uh, full disencryption was a huge one uh, that we couldn't do as an OEM. Um, because if you do full disencryption and uh, load the image and ship it, that means you have the key and that's not right. That's not secure. So um, we needed to build a, we need to write a new installer to make that possible. If we're writing a new installer, well, how about we have a restore partition, partition um, because when our customer has a problem, they call tech support, we can fix it in five minutes for them mm -hmm. um, without, you know, losing you know, files and, and uh, apps, things like that. So, so then after that, we started adding our own uh, value based on the experiences that we had with our customers and um, uh, I'm really just kind of making things smoother and easier for them. Mm -hmm. 